Unbelievable. All glory to God. Thank my Lord. My Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for that shot, man. I was uh, thankful thankful that it went in. First and foremost, I'd just like to thank my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. First and foremost, I'd have to thank my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. First and foremost, man. Thank you to the man above. Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay, thank you. You're not nothing to do with it. No, nothing. It's all him. I was watching the finals this year, the Golden State Warriors win again, and I noticed something. Throughout this entire run, there had been one thing separating them from the other teams. One secret ingredient that the other teams just didn't seem to have. Kevin Durant way outside, delivers! Kevin Durant from downtown, it's a six point game! Like I said, thank God for Kevin Durant. They were all thanking God. You know, first and foremost, I have to thank my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Most importantly, though, I want to thank God. We all believe and we all say God has a, a, a way for you, a purpose for you. Are the Golden State Warriors ordained by God? Is God the ultimate general manager, getting anyone he wants to play for him? Follow me. Or was God just watching and controlling all the games like those Buffalo Wild Wings commercials? My biggest obsession in life has always been sports. I started playing Little League at six and basketball shortly after that. Hey look, it's Kareem abdul Jafro. And then I became a huge Knicks fan, which has been about 95% overall just terrible. Take some Vaseline and swallow it. But it did lead to one great moment that happened during, of all things, the Isaiah Thomas trial. And I did not do the things that she accused me in this courtroom of doing. I think James Dolan should have to give the team to someone who's confident and can run it. I told you guys, big sports fan. And religion had always been there too. Admittingly, I never took church too seriously and certainly never thought to combine it with sports. Hey, maybe that's why I never went pro. I should have been praying before every game and thanking God after every hit. Plenty of room, Jeff. Plenty of room, baby. I needed to figure out what exactly was God's role in sports. First, I reached out to Robin Lundberg. He would have an opinion on this. He's got plenty of opinions. It could be said he is one of the most overrated players of all time. Jesus, you ruined the NBA, you know, <laughs> putting this team together. It's divine intervention to get all those guys on the same squad. If Jesus really does love the Warriors like that, what does he think of the other team, right? You know, what does Jesus think of J.R. Smith? having that blunder at the end of game one of the NBA Finals. Hill misses, rebound, goes to the Cavs. J.R. Smith brings it back out, throws it to Hill. Hill shot blocked. You get the feeling J.R. Smith the thought score. they had the lead. He no. didn't know the score. I think sometimes you could maybe see a benefit for some guys because even if I don't believe it, if they believe it so strongly, you know, you might not have fear of failure if you're not worried about it because you think God is making all the right choices in the end. You know, God has a really good situation. He only gets praise, he never gets blame, right? You know, it's a, it's a nice spot to be in. Generally, if you're of that ilk, if you're on that level, like LeBron James, not saying LeBron's God, but every move he makes is scrutinized, right? LeBron has a huge deficiency in his game he runs from the free throw line late in games. God doesn't have it. If everything good is, is because of God, everything bad, he has nothing to do with. So, I mean, I'm a little envious of his position in that way. Robin was right. Players never blame God. Well, except for one time. Guard going deep. He's got Johnson. Oh, he dropped the ball. That would have been the game winner. It wasn't his fault he dropped the ball. It was God's. He tweeted, I praise you 24-7, and this is how you do me? You expect me to learn from this? How? I'll never forget this, ever. Thanks, though. I needed to dig a little deeper, so I reached out to former NBA player turned author, Paul Shirley. I think guys are saying things reflexively, like when they say they thank God for this opportunity or whatever. Have they really ground down? Have they really had a late night chat with themselves to figure out like what is the meaning of God and existence in the universe and all of those things? 
Probably not. They've just like learned that behavior from their forebears or from coaches. What I saw along the way was mostly not that. It was mostly guys who claimed to be religious, mostly for, I think, marketing purposes because it sells well, who would, not only was it that they would maybe cheat on their wives or um, behave in ways that were certainly unchristian, but it was the, the way they played was even sort of hypocritical. They were just not nice people, you know, like the way that they carried themselves or comported themselves was certainly not a, a Christian way, at least the way that I was taught to be a Christian. I think Amari Stoudemire was one of my favorites because he had a, uh, a tattoo of what looked to be a Bible verse on his arm. It was written in sort of that, like, I don't know how, what that font would be, Corinthian or something, on a sheaf of paper but it was a, a Bible verse that he had written himself, which was basically incomprehensible. Stoudemire wears a medallion inscribed with a prayer from the Torah. I know I say hello, like Shalom and Ishma, and my standing is like Yofi. I know how to count. God, Stein, Shalos, Abraham, Hamesh. I feel like I should have probably asked more questions and made more fun of the situations I was in, but I was so devoted to just succeeding and not and back then, believe it or not, just not rocking the boat, that, uh, that I probably wasn't true to my own personality a lot of the time. So now I've talked to two people on the sports side. I need to speak to someone who plays for the other team. You know, God's team. As a priest in New York in particular, where I often joke that the Sunday morning religious practice of New York City and the surrounding area isn't going to church, but is sitting down for brunch in the New York Times, there's something refreshing about uh, an athlete being earnest about their faith and, and saying unapologetically that this is something that I believe in. I have the success that I have because yes. I love Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ has done tremendous for me yes. and my family. Yes. I can honestly say for the most part, my life of faith is not something I'm thinking about in the midst of watching a game. I'm cheering for the players. I'm hoping that something goes. Certainly I might do the, oh please, oh please, oh please, and pace the room. But I can't say that that prayer has the same sort of depth or meaning as the rest of my prayer life does. Now I will say as a sports fan myself, when my team loses, it certainly feels like God is against me. The Cubs were so terrible for so long that it taught me how to be a Christian because in order to uh, believe that the Cubs could win it all next year, you also had to believe, and you understood something about what it is to believe in resurrection. That against all evidence, that against all odds, that against everything that's in front of you, that um, something newer and greater is possible. I, I did not wake up uh, the morning after the Cubs won the World Series in 2016 with gratitude for the Cubs World Series victory as being at the top of my, pr my prayers for that day. Um, but it certainly was something I was thankful for, um, if that makes any sense. Taken by Spade's final second, it's over, it's over! Cleveland is a city of champions! It takes a lot of things to win a championship. Talent, Smart ownership. Golden State Warriors select Stephen Curry from Davidson College. Luck. The Warriors have been lucky this entire dynasty. This is the, this is the luckiest team in the world. Think about this. But God, I don't know about that. But what I do know is, this year, I'm not taking any chances.